When it comes to future predictions, probabilistic forecasting is one of the most effective approaches to answer the question, when will this be done? And the cycle time scatter plot can be of great help here. This diagram displays all of your completed tasks as dots scattered on a plot. It tells you how long tasks have taken to complete. By observing and analyzing your cycle times and lead times, you will be able to evaluate how fast you're delivering value to your customers. The goal is to reduce the delivery times to an optimal level for your team. The dotted horizontal lines stretching across the graph are called percentile lines. We use percentiles to establish service level agreements and define the probability of different commitment points being met. For example, the 50th percentile on our scatter plot points to eight days. This means that half of the tasks so far have been completed in less than eight days. We can now say that any future task we take on has a 50% chance of being finished in less than eight days. Do we say that the effort time of any task will be eight days? No, we don't. Do we say that we'll deliver the work in exactly eight days? No, we don't. What we say is that we will probably deliver faster, but it won't take longer than eight days and we are 50% certain that we'll hit that target. Remember, forecasting is all about managing risks effectively. Every commitment you make should come with a confidence level to meet your goal. The percentiles on the scatter plot quantify the risk you're managing in terms of percentages. And of course, the percentile you use to define SOAs largely depends on your context. You and your clients may be happy with an 85% certainty, or you both may need a confidence level that's higher than that. You can also filter your data by class of service. It's highly likely that the 85th percentile for fixed delivery day tasks comes with a different cycle time than the 85th percentile for expedites, for example. That way, you can provide different SOAs for different work items you are committing. Furthermore, the cycle time scatter plot enables you to quickly identify and analyze single tasks that strike out on their own. These are often forgotten or neglected tasks in the process. Tasks that have significantly longer cycle times are good candidates for a closer examination to identify process impediments. Look for patterns in your data, gaps, high variability, clusters of dots, or a progressively growing triangle shape are warning signs that there are bottlenecks on your workflow that need to be taken care of. In the process metrics widget, you can see all the times that corresponds to your percentiles listed on the top. This line represents the percentiles for the entire process. You can also evaluate the percentiles for each process step in your workflow. You can observe how the trends of each percentile move over time as well. Here is the thing. The distance between these percentiles represents your predictability. And observing how the trends build as the time passes will help you understand whether you're becoming more predictable or not. Any reduction of the gaps between your percentiles means you are improving your predictability. And let me give you another piece of advice here. The best chance for delivering on time comes when you make sure you start your work on time. When you start working on your assignments too early, you are both wasting capacity on work that is not yet due and running out of capacity for work that is due. When you start too late though, you risk delaying your work and breaking your commitments. The longer you wait, the higher the chance of a delay. In order to identify the best time to start, look at your probability forecast for the specific class of service you're interested in. The ideal time range to start your work is any time between the 99th percentile and the 85th percentile. Let's say that you need to deliver on 30th of May 
and your forecast says there is a 99% chance to finish a standard task within 23 days and an 85% chance to finish it within 11 days. This means that the ideal time to start your work is between 23 and 11 days before the delivery date or any time in the range of 7th of May, 19th of May. By initiating your work within the normal start date range, you will have at least an 85% chance of delivering it on time. To optimize your workflow performance, you need to break your delivery times down into smaller pieces and evaluate the improvement opportunities. This is best achieved in the cycle time breakdown chart. The diagram displays the cycle times of your completed tasks split by status. By analyzing the different sections on the bars, you can assess how the time spent in each status affects the overall time needed to finish your work. The most important information to get from the cycle time breakdown chart is how the data changes in time. It is an indicator of continuous improvement. If the longest sections are going down, this is a sign that your improvement efforts are paying off. But if the cycle times are going up, it is better to take a step back and analyze the reasons behind that behavior. The breakdown widget on the top is of great help when it comes to bottleneck analysis. It visualizes your process state cycle times versus the overall cycle time needed to finish your work. Spotting the states with the longest sections on the chart, analyzing their cycle times and identifying the root causes of the delays is a tremendous step towards reducing delivery times and improving the predictability of your system. The cycle time histogram shows the frequency distribution of the completion times of the tasks in your workflow. The horizontal axis displays your cycle times and the vertical axis shows the number of work items with the same cycle time. By analyzing the frequency distribution of your cycle times, you will be able to determine whether there is too much variability in your process. A widespread indicates that your cycle time varies significantly and your workflow is inconsistent. The mode is the easiest average to calculate. This is the number that appears most often. In this case, a cycle time of one day is the most. Since that's the most commonly occurring cycle time, if you ask this team how much time they usually need to complete a task, the answer would be one day. The median shows the middle number of a data set. The mean is the average calculation that you're most likely to be familiar with. This involves adding up all the values and dividing them by the number of instances in the data set. If there is too much variability in your system, the mean, the median, and the mode values will significantly differ from each other. In fat tail distributions, the mode is unlikely to move at all, the median will only be affected a little bit, and the mean will move considerably to the right as the tail continues to grow. Using the averages of your cycle time distribution to make future predictions is a fragile approach. Firstly, the longer the tail of the distribution, the higher the difference between the averages. Furthermore, you need to perform additional analysis to verify the probability that comes with the mean and the mode averages. You may have a 30% chance or 50% chance or 80% chance of meeting that commitment. Even though it feels intuitive, would you commit to the most common delivery time if it only comes with a 30% chance of meeting your commitment? This is certainly something I don't recommend doing. When it comes to the averages, the mean, the median, and the mode, I would like you to think about them in terms of a measure of performance. It is important to track how your average trends build over time. Ideally, the lines should be close to each other, stay even, or go down. If the values are going up, that's a sign that something is slowing down your delivery speed. The percentiles on the cycle time histogram are the same as in the cycle time scatter plot, 
we use them to perform probabilistic forecasts. Essentially, they define a range of cycle times and the probability that comes with each of them. There you have it. You now know how to analyze your cycle times. Now, let's talk about how to track the amount of work in progress in your system.